Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 58 of ASP.NET GridView tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about exporting GridView data to a PDF document. We'll be using this table TBL employee for this demo. We want to retrieve data from this table, display that within the GridView control. And then when I click this button export to PDF, we want to export this GridView data into a PDF document. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's now drag and drop a grid view control onto the web form. Let's auto format this. Let's choose brown sugar scheme. Let's drag and drop a button control onto this web form. And then let's change the text on the button control to export to PDF. Let's double click on the button control to generate the event handler. All right, the first thing to do is to write some ADO.NET code to retrieve data from this table and then display that within the GridView control. And to speed things up, I have this ADO.NET code already implemented. So let me copy and paste this ADO.NET code within the page load event. So what we are doing here, if it's not a postback, meaning if this is the initial get request of the web form, use the configuration manager class, read the connection string from web.config file. And using that connection string, we are building a SQL connection object and then look at our SQL command select star from TBL employee. Um, we are building our SQL data adapter and then we are creating a data set object here and then we are filling the data set with the data after we execute that command and then setting the data set as the data source for the grid view control and invoking data bind. So at this point if we run the application we should have this data displayed within the grid view control. Now when we click that button export to PDF, the data that's there within the grid view control needs to be exported to a PDF document. And to generate a PDF document, we're going to make use of an open source assembly, itextsharp.dll. This assembly can be downloaded from the URL that you can see on the slide. Now, this is the website. Click on this button download, you know, once you are on that URL, then it's going to download a zipped folder, extract the contents of that zip fo folder. It's going to, you know, extract, you know, some, a few other zip folders. From there, you know, extract the contents of this core zip folder. Within the core folder, you can find itextsharp.dll assembly. Now, you need to add a reference to this assembly in your project. So, let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's add a reference to that assembly. So select your DLL, click OK. So we have a reference to that assembly now. Now within this assembly, there are you know three namespaces that we'll be making use of. Okay, and to speed things up, I have them you know already typed here. So let me copy and paste them here. So as you can see, these are the three namespaces that we need to use. All right. So we have the button click event handler. So when we click that button, that's when we want to export this data to a grid view control. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a PDF table here. So there's a class called a PDF P table. So I'm going to make use of this class to create a table, you know, that we are going to use in the PDF document. So PDF P table, I'm going to call this PDF table is equal to new PDF P table. And look at this, this class has got several constructors. Now I'm going to use a constructor which is going to take in the number of columns. How many columns are there within our grid view control? One, two, three, and four. Now you can hard code the number of columns, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to retrieve the number of columns dynamically from the grid view control. And to do that, I'm going to use gridview1.columns.count. Okay, but then look at this. If you use this property, you know, this property will always return zero if you don't have any columns defined at a design time. At the moment, if you look, up, look at our grid view control, we don't have any columns or fields of the grid view control defined at design time. Okay, so because of this, what's going to happen is this, you know, grid view1.columns.count will always return zero. So instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say grid view1.header row dot cells dot count so I can use that because if you look at the grid view header row we have one two and three and four four cells there so cells dot count property is going to give me the correct count there so we first created the PDF table the next thing that we have to do is obviously loop through each cell within this grid view control and then you know create a cell add that cell to this PDF table 
okay so let me loop through each row first so how do we loop through each row within the grid view control I can use a for each loop so for each I'm going to say grid view row in the ID of our grid view control is grid view one so grid view one dot rows so we are going to loop through each row within this grid view one control let's give that grid view row you know an object an object reference variable so we are looping through each row within the grid view control and then within each row we have got a cell so let's loop through each cell so for each cell it's called a table cell so for each table cell and let's call it table cell in grid view row dot cells okay so we are looping through each row and each cell within the grid view control and then what I'm going to do here is create so here we have a PDF table that we are going to use in PDF document and then in PDF table you have PDF cells so I'm going to create a PDF cell and then I'm going to populate each PDF cell you know with data from each cell from the grid view control that's the reason why we are looping through each row and each cell of the grid view control so it's called PDF P cell so I'm going to create uh, a PDF cell here and then look at this this PDF P cell class has got several constructors okay I'm going to use a constructor which takes in a phrase object okay so I have to pass a new phrase object to this so I'm going to create a new phrase object and then look at this it expects a string to be passed in so where am I going to get that string from I can get that string you know from this table cell because all we want to do is retrieve the text out of this table cell and then assign that text as the text for PDF cell and how do we assign that as the text for PDF cell by creating this new phrase object and and passing it to the constructor of this PDF cell class it's as simple as that alright so I'm going to use the stable cell pass it to that object and then close that and all that is left out right now is to add this PDF cell to our table so what's our table PDF table dot add cell and we are going to add PDF cell object to that okay here we have a syntax error that's because it expects you know uh, a string but we are passing in table cell object we should actually be passing the text from the table cell okay so that should solve that problem so at this point what we have done we have looped through each row of this grid view control each cell retrieved the text added the text to this PDF cell which in turn is added to the PDF table okay so all that is left right now is to create a document of you know look at this PDF cell this is actually coming from this itext sharp dot text dot PDF namespace that's the reason why we have you know imported all these namespaces at the top alright so I'm going to create a PDF document now so again I'm going to use this document class again look at this document class where is this coming from itext sharp dot text dot document class okay so I'm going to create this document and this is let's call it PDF document is equal to new document and then you know there are again several overloaded constructors I'm going to use a constructor you know where you can specify your page size so I'm going to specify page size dot it's going to be an A4 page size now look at this if you want this PDF document to be rendered in a landscape format you can use this A4 underscore landscape but you know it, it's not working as expected there is another trick that you can use you know to render the PDF document in a landscape format probably we'll talk about that in our next video session for now let's choose A4 as the page size and then you can specify the margin left margin right margin top and bottom for everything I'm going to specify 10 F F for float because every you know parameter type 
here you know is of type float so I'm going to copy that and do the same thing for the right top and bottom margins okay so we have our PDF document created now so I'm going to use another class called PDF writer class and then I'm going to get an instance of this document so get instance I'm going to invoke this method and then pass the PDF document and then the next parameter is the response stream so I'm going to say response object has caught this output stream so which we are going to pass you know as a parameter to this method and then all that is left at now is open your PDF document and then to that PDF document add this PDF table that we have created so copy that and then add the PDF table and then close your PDF document so what we have done we have opened the PDF document added the table and we are going to close that all right now we need to you know export that and we, we want to open that immediately when when somebody clicks that button so I'm going to use the response object to do that because we want to send it back to the client so response dot you know we need to specify the content type and we need to um, you know specify our PDF file name as well using content disposition response header we discussed about you know content type and uh, you know uh, response headers in the previous session when we discussed about exporting a grid view data to a word document and to an excel document so here we're going to specify uh, you know the content type as application slash pdf and to the response object we are going to append an header so append header and we are going to use a header called content hyphen disposition you know that's the response header which can be used to specify a name for your file so I'm going to say content hyphen disposition and then here we need to specify it as an attachment semicolon and then we can specify the file name and let's specify the file name as employees dot PDF okay so we specified the content type we added a header so what's the next thing the next thing is we need to write the PDF document using the write method of the response object so response dot write and then pass the PDF document to that okay flush the response completely and then end the response okay so that's all there to it now let's go ahead and run this see if we are able to export the PDF data okay so when the grid view renders it has to display the employee data and then when we click that button you know export to PDF we should be able to export to PDF and we click that and then look at this I get this warning this type of file can harm your computer do you want to keep this a uh, file employee.pdf anyway you know this is an issue with Google Chrome you know it's a known issue just click on keep and then you'll have your PDF employees.pdf let me click on that look at that I get all the employees but there are two problems with this PDF document number one it doesn't have the header and number two this table doesn't have the formatting that I have in my grid view control so I would like to have the header and the formatting so I want to retain both of them okay first let's get the header and that's simple so here if you look at what you're doing we're actually looping through each grid view data row but we are not looping through the header row so let's do that as well so let me actually copy this piece of code and then on the top so I'm going to loop through each cell of the grid view header so I'm going to say actually we can get rid of this for each loop we only need the internal for each loop press control K and D to format it properly so for each table cell in 
gridview1.headerRow.cells. So we are going to loop through each cell in the gridview header row. And let's call this header cell. Okay. So we are going to retrieve the header cell text. And then again, we are creating a PDF cell here, which we are adding it to the PDF table. Okay, let's build this to make sure it compiles. And then let's run this to make sure, you know, we get the header as well, along with the rest of the data. So export to PDF. Click on keep again. You know, this error is only on uh, Google Chrome. Uh, if you are using Internet Explorer, it works fine. So click keep, open the PDF. Look at that, I get employee ID name, gender, city. Okay, now let's fix the formatting part. So how to fix the formatting part? All right, so when I add the header, it's not just the header. I also want to, you know, keep the formatting there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a font object here. So for each cell, I have to do that. So I'm going to create a font object. Again, this font is present in itext sharp dot, um, you know, text namespace from the assembly that we have downloaded. So font is equal to new font. And then I'm going to use a constructor which doesn't take any parameter. And then all I'm going to specify here is the font color. And to do that, I can use the color property of the font object. And then look at what it expects. It expects a base color. Okay, so I'm going to create a new base color object. And then look at this. It takes several, you know, there are several constructors again. But I'm going to use the constructor which is going to take, you know, system.drawing.color enumeration. So I'm going to specify instead of hard coding the color, we want to retrieve that from the grid view control itself. So how do I get the grid view, you know, font color? So basically, we want this text color. And to do that, you can simply say grid view one dot header row dot font actually header row style dot color dot four color so we can use that property there that's it so we have specified the font object and the color next we need to pass somehow this font object we have to associate that with this PDF cell and to do that you know this PDF cell class has got several overloaded constructors so I'm going to use a constructor which takes in a font object as well actually it is not PDF cell it's you know the phrase object so if you look at the phrase object it takes in you know one of the overloaded constructors it takes in a font object so I'm going to pass this font object there okay so that should fix the you know the font of the text but then I want the background color as well so how am I going to get the background color now we set the background color to the cell to the PDF cell okay so to do that you know for this PDF cell I'm going to set the background color so there is a property called background color again this uses a base color object so I'm just going to copy this and then paste it right there and how do I specify the background color header style has got this back color property okay so let's do the same thing for each row data row as well so here instead of header style we are going to specify row style and let's copy this line and then specify the background color here. So again, instead of saying header style, it's going to be row style. Okay, so let's run this and see if it works as expected. Okay, still loading. Let's click on export to PDF, keep the document, open the file, and look at this. I get the format as expected. 
So let's say we want to zoom into 100%. Look at that. Now it's getting displayed in a portrait format. In our next video, we'll see how to change the uh, format to a landscape. And then also we will see how to actually, instead of downloading this, let's say I, I want to generate a PDF document and store it on a folder on the server. You know, we'll discuss about that in our next video session. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.